اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم all right so we're going to make a quick list of things that are included as part of haya okay haya what is what is included i'll read a few things from here it says that um it's a quality that causes one to refrain from obscene statements and acts this feeling of shyness if you're shy to do anything improper you're shy to sin in front of allah you're shy to um do anything obscene or vulgar or inappropriate yes what else yeah uh, um like you like want to get something but you don't want to ask but you asked a lot of times before you like get mad why are you keep on asking me okay so yeah that feeling that when you're too shy to ask for something on the prophet for the 50s a lot and he was too shy after five Yeah, so when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he went he was told 50 prayers and then he went back and back and back until it was made five. He was too shy to go back. Right? That was his haya. And so that feeling Ibrahim when you feel that feeling like you don't want to ask your parents for something because you you know that it's inappropriate that it's you've been bugging them too much. That is kind of like what the feeling is. But with Allah if you ask him for like jannah for example over and over again, he doesn't get annoyed like other people people get annoyed yeah you can ask him all day long and he will never get annoyed um so also that feeling of awkwardness or uneasiness in your heart you know you find kind of feel like yeah i'm not really sure if this is right but that that sort of itching that or that discomfort what else what else would you is included as part of haya mhm I don't know. When you're dealing with people, interacting with people. How do you have haya? Come on. Oh. Like you, you need to like if you have like I remember he when he had homework, he had to call an old friend for it and he had to talk to the friend in like a long long time for like some like volunteer work or something like that. So that China? So then he didn't want to ask him as soon as he got on the phone even though he knew his assignment was due soon. He kind of had to say, "Oh, how are you doing?" whatever whatever mm. first. So that uh So they don't think you're only calling me just to, for the assignment. Well, that's in- in- Well, that's interesting because when you make dua, what are the manners of dua? You start by doing what? What do you start? How do you st- Happy Salad Mike candy. What do you what do you start when you when you when you're making dua? What do you start with? I'm requested. Hmm? When you make dua, what's what is it? It's yes. recommended to start with what before you start? What is recommended? Do you guys know? Um, I'm um, saying Bismillah. Mm. Oh, like inside of Surah Fatiha, first you like praise Allah. First you praise Allah. And oh, you do the say, first thing. Say sala- salah and salam on the Prophet oh. sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you do prayer like dua. Prayer? You work your way up to the dua oh, like yeah. that, right? Bye bye. Well, yeah, kind of. Uh but out of respect, you know, out of respect. And so yes, that is kind of like haya, that feeling of, you know, I'm not going to be so presumptuous to just come and demand something. I'm going to first, you know, work up to it. Right? So that is part of haya too. Um Al-Jahad states al-haya is related to dignity. It's so a feeling of dignity, lowering one's gaze. Um it's praiseworthy habit as long as it does not stem from ignorance or inability. So, we're not talking about shyness that comes from being ignorant or shyness that comes from not wanting to try at something. No, not that kind of shyness. Okay? Zunun al-Masri states haya is finding intimidation and sadness in the heart due to evil acts committed before the Lord. What does that mean? What does that mean? Like, feeling what does it mean to feel intimidation and sadness in the heart? Like 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 bad, like it feels like oh my god, like uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Like, yeah, uncomfortable. Like it should feel uncomfortable. This will being Allah should feel uncomfortable. And one of the biggest problems of our time is what not just disobeying Allah, but disobeying Allah publicly. Disobeying Allah and putting a picture of it and saying, "Wow, look at me." doing such and such and and just feeling okay with disobeying Allah like that 
This is, and this is the rest of the quote. This is beautiful. It says, love causes you to speak. Haya causes you to be silent. And fear causes you to be worried. So it's, there's that balancing act. Oh, like love, fear, and hope? Kind of, yeah. It's like the balance yeah. between love, fear, and hope. Oh, love. love Haya is... Like what brings you closer. Uh-huh. Fear is what... Fear is what... Um, keeps you close and hope well, keeps you alive to keep moving closer hope keeps that you know when you have that hope okay I think we got off track so let's get back this is an this is another beautiful statement it says it was also said that haya is indicated listen to this by one's insides melting from the gaze of the master Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over him or her so it's like when you feel like Allah is watching you and you feel your insides are melting out of Allah's gaze on you because you're so intimidated, you know. Remember, Ibrahim, you were saying how when you think about how great Allah is, then you start feeling smaller, right? So so, so that's what it is. It's like you, you're, you're so shy in front of Him. You're so shy that how can I do anything that would make him upset so uh, let's finish up with this quote so he quotes this um, these few lines of poetry which the English translation is my desires never once invited me to vice to sin except that in my way stood haya and dignity nor did my hand stretch out to a thing forbidden, nor did my foot carry me to acts of villainy. So <laughs> my desires and my, you know, my, my hand and my feet I... didn't stretch out to do something except that haya and dignity was standing in my way. Yeah. So this feeling of, you know, th that's what makes you a dignified person, right? Yeah. Is holding, is that you're not like an animal because what do animals do? Anything to hold them back. They don't have anything to hold them back. They want to eat, they eat. They want to sleep, they sleep. They want to, you know, fight another animal, they fight another. There's no like sense of, you know, humans, Allah's elevated us with this sense of dignity, right? Okay, so we're going to finish with that today. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tu. I mean.